Hey, 8th grade, how are you? Happy Tuesday. Um, today, we're going to begin our exploration of divisive issues um, that separate liberals and conservatives that make up our politique uh, in our debates today um, that, that shape uh, our elections. Um, so for the next eight lessons, um, you're going to be introduced one general topic of debate and then two issues that kind of tie off of it. We're going to examine each debate from the liberal and the conservative perspectives. And you should be keeping a record. I attached uh, a, a spreadsheet that if you want to use it um, with the uh, and download it or you know uh, make your own copy of it or print it uh, to keep a uh, rack rank of uh, which where you stand on each issue so that way when you're choosing or sending me your choices for which ones you want to actually debate it might be a helpful thing to go back to um, when we're all done you're gonna send me your top three choices at the end of the unit and you're gonna be taking part in a one-on-one -on -one debate on one of these 16 issues. All of you will take part in a one-on-one -on -one debate. Are you going to be guaranteed to get one of your choices? No. But um, I will do my best, and that's definitely a, a good start to trying to make sure you get something that you're interested in debating. Today's topic is 2020 Hot Topics. I'm not talking about the store. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the impeachment of President Donald J. Trump. And we're going to talk about something that's pretty hot right now. Whether or not uh, they should end the government mandated social distancing as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, let's first get into what kind of started our year. Uh, this ever exciting year and that was the impeachment of president trump and here you see on the left people uh, marching and protesting in favor of impeaching president trump and on the right here you see people uh, rallying together in support of president trump so let's look at both of their perspectives this one is a little bit more mixed than some of the other issues uh, because we have to go through a timeline of events and kind of both sides' reactions to it. Um, so, first off, what constitutes an impeachable defense? Um, according to most constitutional scholars, it's, quote, quote, high crimes and misdemeanors. Well, what does that mean? Um, Alexander Hamilton in the Federalist Papers described this as abuse or violation of the public trust. Um, so, if the president commits severe crimes while in you know serving and being charged of enforcing the laws the idea is that no one is supposed to be above the law and that if the president breaks the law they can be punished for it um president trump was impeached officially by the house of representatives on december 18th 2019 um essentially this means the president was charged with crimes it's similar if a citizen gets an indictment and they now have to stand trial. Um, he was charged with abuse of power and obstructing Congress. On February 5th, uh, 2020, about a month and a half later, uh, President Trump was acquitted of both charges by the Senate. Um, they voted uh, mostly along party lines. Uh, to uh, The majority voted that he was found not guilty not uh, liable of abuse of power and obstructing Congress. Um, so what we're going to look into is the timeline of what led to that and what both sides were saying. Um, the president, uh, President Trump's uh, impeachment um, can be traced to a July 25th, 2019 phone call that he had with President Ukraine of the Ukraine, uh, President Zelensky. Zelensky was recently elected um, and was looking to establish strong relations with the U.S. since Ukraine was in the middle of an ongoing war um, with Russia and had was very much dependent on 
that aid. Uh, President Trump suspended that aid, even though it was mandated and ordered by Congress. Um, and then after talking about the uh, U.S. military aid on a phone call with President Zelensky, uh, President Trump then asked him for a, quote, favor and talked about opening an investigation into his uh, possible opponent and now his definite opponent, uh, Democrat Joe Biden, former vice president of the United States. Um, he wanted to look into whether or not uh, Biden's son, Hunter, uh, benefited from uh, Joe Biden as vice president pressuring uh, the Ukraine government to uh, in, uh, investigate a prosecutor who was going after a company that Biden's son sat on the board of. Um, Biden's son has since left, but there's definitely a lot of, you know, weird things. You know, he didn't have a background in working in fossil fuels or in energy. Why was he on this board, uh, you know, and Pre Vice President Biden, when he was vice president, was pretty open about trying to push for this uh, prosecutor who was corrupt to be removed. So liberals argue that this moment where President Trump leveraged military aid against uh, President Zelensky in order to get him to investigate Joe Biden is when he abused power, when he committed an impeachable act. That uh, they argued that he essentially asked a foreign country to interfere in our election, to dig up dirt on a political opponent that he'd be running against in um, a general election and asking a foreign power to do this. Conservatives argued that President Trump was investigating co corruption in Ukraine, something that was a major concern. They also argue that, that, that this is a, a normal thing that happens in diplomacy. Um, liberals counter this and say this was a quid pro quo, uh, which essentially means an exchange where you give me something in exchange, uh, I, I give you something in exchange for something that I really want. So it's, it's a one hand washing the other type thing. So I'll give you the military aid if you give me dirt on President Biden and announce publicly that uh, that he was doing, you know, these that you're investigating him doing these illegal activities. Um, so that's the exchange. You get military aid. You announce that you're investigating Biden and uh, making him look bad since I'm going to run against him. Republicans counter this again that a this wasn't a quid pro quo that this was a normal exchange of the dipl diplomatic ideas that the U.S. often tries to leverage things over one country to get them to do something in this case battling corruption. Um, at this point, once a whistleblower, a person who was working in Trump's government. Uh, revealed that he, this phone call had taken place to Congress. Uh, congressional investigations began, including a congressional impeachment investigation. Uh, President Trump ordered his staff not to cooperate with the, the investigation, saying that it was unconstitutional. Um, he also argued that uh, his executive privilege allowed him to protect um, his... Uh, conversations as the president uh, that if those are always held up that the president won't be able to act effectively to make the best decisions that these uh, investigations will you know tie up the president from being able to effectively act as the chief executive um, so as a result several members of the Trump administration ignore congressional subpoenas um, a subpoena is a demand to appear before a government body and testify under oath um, you know, if you get subpoenaed to court to testify as a witness and you don't come, you're held in contempt of court. That's a criminal charge. Um, so liberals argued that these actions were contempt of Congress, um, that the president's actions was were obstructing or interfering or trying to stop their in investigation, that uh, this was an obstruction of justice. Um, 
they also claimed that the administration made a number of the documents highly classified in order to stop Congress from having access to them. Uh, once again, trying to obstruct them. Uh, that they realized that there was something wrong with this phone call and they tried to block it from ever being released. Um, on the other hand, uh, many people from President Trump's administration did testify. Um, and the evidence that they presented was definitely... It, some of it definitely showed that there was some... Uh, desire to uh, or perceived desire in the administration by people that the uh, administration wanted the uh, the Ukrainians to investigate Joe Biden in exchange for military aid but on the other hand nobody clearly testified and said that that was overtly done now a lot of people who would have been in those meetings like for example uh, the president's chief of staff at the time Nick Mulvaney who said in a press conference that there was a quid pro quo, uh, refused to appear before Congress and testify. So you have on one end the president saying these people don't have to testify, and on the other end Congress saying no, they have to. You're violating and breaking the law and obstructing justice by doing this. Um, conservatives argue that the inquiry was... Uh, and the whole process, the impeachment process, was, and to use President Trump's words, a witch hunt, uh, that it was deeply biased, that it was flawed, that they're going after him on for political means, not because of any real violation of the law. They argued that the president's due process rights were violated, uh, that he never got to uh, have the, um, the whistleblower uh, who was protected under whistleblowing laws, but who accused... President Trump publicly of breaking the law that you know your due process rights are that you get to question and uh, your those who bear witness against you uh, that you get to question the evidence and that they argue that this uh, whole process was quote rigged um, and they argued that the conversations of the administration are protected by executive privilege so President Trump was justified in ignoring congressional subpoenas. Um, and lastly, they argue that there was no quid pro quo, that the Ukraine never got the, uh, never, that the Ukraine got the aid eventually, and President Trump ne never got the investigation into the Bidens. Um, but a Democrat or a liberal would counter that and saying, well, they were attempting it, and once it was exposed, that then falled back. So that is, uh, my quick rundown on the impeachment of President Trump on both sides. I hope I did a good job of showing you what both sides were saying. Uh, we'll definitely explore this more in a debate soon.